Today we're making some fun St. Patrick's Day crafts. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a Dollar Tree pot of gold. You're going to need some deco mesh. I think something with gold is a good touch. Some black felt. Some pipe cleaners. This little sign from Dollar Tree. Very cute as it is and it's in the St. Patrick's Day decor section. A variety of gold ribbon. Some of these are thrifted. As a matter of fact, I think I got all these thrifted. Yes, I did. And they're just a different widths and different textures. Some yellow or gold flowers. Your choice. And we're going to start by taking the paper parts off. Be careful with that Lucky because we'll be using that again later in this video. So I'm going to put that aside. And then you can carefully tear off the little shamrocks because you know you can use these in other projects. So if you're very careful when you remove them, you can use them again. We don't need the tag on here and we can take off all of these little fake coins. I'm going to pull them off. They come off very easily and you're going to get them off the front and then flip it over and take those off the back. So I said felt, but you could actually use any fabric that you like. I just like that this felt is kind of stretchy. Um, it came on a roll, so you can get this at Dollar Tree, something similar to it. Just getting an idea of how much I'm going to need to wrap around this pot and glue it in the back. I'm going to go up to the edge of the gold tinsel there, and we're just going to put this right on top of all that tinsel. It's going to bulk it up a little bit. Not as much as I like, and I'll show you how to make yours a little bit more of a pot belly, um, a pot belly pot, I guess you could say. A cauldron, more like. I'm going to make a nice little seam, a nice little edge, and fold it over, glue it down on the front side, then you can flip it over on the back, stretch it around, and this is why it's important to have plenty of fabric. Glue it right down over that. The frame of this is a plastic. You can see here, plastic. So I'm just going to go right around and glue that fabric on a plastic strip. You can use some clips here if you want to to hold everything in place. And protect your fingers. I've been crafting so long now, I've kind of learned how to do this without hurting myself. So, but definitely protect your fingers. Now, I want to make sure that that little that the lip is showing on the edge of the pot or the lip or that first little dimple there so i'm just kind of pulling it and i'm really not pulling it that tight but this stretches but you can see what this does it kind of puts little you can see the little parts of the frame that are poking out now and i don't really care for that so i'm going to show you how you can fix it but if you don't mind that part totally fine and you could always strip off all of your tinsel and clip off the little it's where it's those little sections where they wrap the tinsel to hold it in place but they can be easily clipped off with some sturdy scissors or with your wire cutters so if you want to do it this way you can totally do it this way if it doesn't bother you totally do it this way I like to start on my outsides and then work toward the middle and then do the middle last so use those clips as an extra hand. Hold everything in place until it's nice and dry. And you flip it over. Now, I decided I didn't care for the shape that this, this silhouette that it left with the little bumps on the side. So I'm gonna grab some, this is a pillow that I tore apart and I have used it so much with batting. I did a, a witch's hat and I used a similar technique as this. It just, it's gonna fill it out. It's gonna give it a little more oomph it's going to thicken up that profile, and I like the way that it that it looks. So you can certainly do it this way. Now, the batting will hold pretty good in place with that felt while you work to get it all covered up. You know, pretty good. So the same thing we did before. We're going to flip it over, get a nice smooth edge. Take that edge, flip it over so that the edge is on the inside. And you're going to lay it right down on top of the other area right on the top and then put it right there it really does bulk it up enough and you can see the difference too when you do this so if you have enough of this fabric and you have some batting or an old pillow that you can take apart or pillow stuffing whatever you want to call it then feel free to grab that 
So I'm just going to cut this off so it's a little more manageable. I've got a little, it's a little extra easy to work with. I'm going to fold that over and then fold the other side. Then you can grab some of that um, pillow fluff, batting, whatever you want to call it. I guess batting is what you use in blankets probably. So I'm probably not saying that right. But the pillow fluff. And you're just going to go around and tuck it between your layers of felt on the outside. And this is going to help fill in those little areas that poke out. I want to say pokey out areas, but that is so incorrect. You can tell that I have 9 and 10 year old kids in the house. The pokey outy parts. So I'm just going along with my fingers on the inside to feel where they are and lay it right to the outside and kind of pull that over and glue it as I go. This is going to round it out better and it's so lightweight. It, it's still going to um, be really easy to hang. You're not adding a bunch of weight. You're just adding some bulk to it. But I like that. I want it to be nice and round and full because we want this pot of gold to be absolutely lip and full of gold. Am I right? Yes. We want our luck to never run out. We want our blessings to overflow. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to have an overflowing pot of gold. So the same as before, I'm going to pull it up and glue it down. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. Now you can take your hands and kind of feel and move that around between the two layers until you get the exact silhouette that is right for you, that you like. Remember what I tell y'all all the time make it your own sometimes people feel the need to tell me how i've done something wrong but i have not i've made it my own right and you have to teach and you have to show by example so i'm showing you how i make it my own encouraging you to make yours exactly your own how you like it okay so once you've got that all done you're going to grab some of your little roll here i didn't even use a whole roll of mesh i'm only going to be cutting out um, I think it's 10 inch sections here or a little over because I've got my ribbon and my mesh all the way to the edge of the mat instead of at the one mark. So this is about, I think, 10 inches here. You're going to cut those, uh, that mesh roll into six pieces and then you're going to use your ribbons, your variety of ribbons. And I've chosen three different gold ribbons and I'm going to cut three pieces of each of those and dovetail them. I love this glittery ribbon. Can you believe this stuff does not shed at all? I hope y'all can find some of this if you're interested in this project because this is such a beautiful ribbon. So now let's get ready to make some cruffles. They probably call it a billion different things, but that is what I learned and I believe it was from my DIY that I learned that she calls them cruffles. So going to do it like that. You're going to roll it, walk your fingers together, roll it, and clip it. I'm going to do it again because I was chatting. So I'm going to roll it, walk your fingers through the middle, then I'm going to twist it around, and roll the other side. Let me roll. If you can't hold it when you're twisting it, grab your clamp and just clip it there, you know, and let it, let it hold it for you. All right. Now you're going to clip two together. We're going to make three sets of two. And then with the ribbons, we're just going to make some little stacks. We've done these lots of times. So y'all are professionals now with these bow stacks. Am I right? Yes, you are confident in your work and your skills because we have done this same type of thing many, many times. And you know, I think that's important. You do do it, learn, build your confidence, and then try something different. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners and we're going to go through this uh, gold tinsel here. We're going to use the pipe cleaners through the back to go through the frame. And it's just right across and I'm going to do this to three sections. And this is what we're going to use to hold our cruffles and our little stacks of ribbon. So we got three here. And then we'll go back um, later and add one on each side on the edge just to fill it out a little bit better because we want this to, to appear abundant, right? We are praying for abundance in our life. So we're going to put that down. This is a little stack of two of those cruffles. I'm going to twist it in. 
then you're gonna go over to the other side or you can go to the middle but I'm gonna just work on the other side and work toward the middle making sure I've got those and they're not unfolding they're not unraveling while I'm working with it and y'all if it bothers you that you get the cheaper um, you know the deco mesh and it's fraying just trim that off when you're done No problem you can do that so there's our third right there in the middle then we're gonna take those beautiful gold ribbons and start adding those I am loving this and in the fall a couple years ago I got several rolls of this cream and uh, gold deco mesh and I haven't even used it and what a perfect time for St. Patrick's Day to use that mesh perfect. so if you've got some pull it out of your stash and get crafty now like I did before I'm working toward the center so I'm gonna grab those pipe cleaners in the center and give it a couple of good twists to hold it in place love a good pipe cleaner that doesn't break when you when you pull on it it's very important so now I'm just gonna kind of roll out or down these pieces of ribbon now that mesh looking ribbon back there doesn't have any wire in it but the others are wired and then trim off these pipe cleaners because we don't need those anymore now you see me here just kind of fluffing and pulling these out to make them have a nice full appearance I love fluffing bows and, and bow tails. It just completely changes a project when everything is nice and fluffed. So far this is what we have and now we're going to add the outside um, edges. In the outside part we won't do cruffles, we're just going to do little rolls. So some of y'all um, say that you like my projects but you wouldn't go as far as I do. You know that you'll stop um, before I do because you know I like to add a bunch of stuff so at this point if you wanted to stop you could I want to widen out that top a little bit more again I'm trying to manipulate the profile a bit so that I get it to look exactly how I see it in my mind's eye I'm rolling that just a roll that's about 12 inches just rolled up and I'm just gonna take that half a pipe cleaner because that's all we really need and twist that on the edge and I want to pull that back down I hope I don't end up saying pumpkin. I probably will sometime in this video, but I, you know I'm talking about the pot, right? Okay. So I'm going to fluff those out a little bit. That's just going to give it a, a wider top. And again, feel like it's more of that full, abundant look that I'm trying to accomplish when you look at this. You know, I want this to be so high-end and for people to just think that it came from a boutique. I think you can accomplish it with this project, too. You just let me know in the end when you see all of the projects complete. If you think that this turned out to be something that you could find maybe in a boutique or craft show, let me know what you think. I'd love to know. So how cute is that so far? Again, leave it here. If this is all you want to do, you can leave it here. But you know I've got to put my greenery in there. So I've got some clovers that were on a pick with some of the little purple flowers. Um, there's certain types of in the south red clover white clover and then we have some that's kind of a lavender color so i picked these off of the lavender i didn't want the flowers in here because i'm going to be using white and yellow and i'm just going to glue those here and there all around the gold ribbons get my little web off of there you can glue directly on your ribbons you can glue directly on the pot uh, whatever way you like it then I've got some more of these scrap pieces of fern that came off of some wildflower pick that I got from Dollar Tree. They're really nice too. Very sturdy. They're not fabric. They're a plastic. But they're very nice, I think. So I'm adding this greenery in. Again, you know I love my woodland. You know I love the outdoors and country. And so this is what I'm going to show you here. This is you're going to see that in my projects for sure these uh, little daisy picks i have had these four years and i have i had a big bunch of them that i thrifted and they're almost gone and i want some more so i try to pick them off of projects and recycle them and i use them over and over again because they're so dainty and sweet and 
you know, no. They're just cute. Aren't they sweet? I'm just going to put them all over in here to make them look like they're randomly just living in our pot of gold. You can put as many or as little as you want. Now, you could always use solid yellow flowers if you like that. Uh, if you don't want to put greenery in it, you know, you don't have to. You could just put some flowers in there. But I got to do it. You know I have to do it. I got to go that extra mile because I have so much fun when I craft. I cannot tell you guys enough how much I love my job. This is my full-time job, and I love it. And I love all of you who come and support me and encourage me, watch my videos, and, you know, the comments where you tell me that you're inspired and that you really like it. It really means a lot to me. So keep it coming, y'all. Keep it coming. So I've cut this off of a string of beads that I also got at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to make a pick out of it because the little hat is so cute. And I'm just going to put it down in here where I think I like it. Kind of off to the side. Super cute. And then I will just glue that in place. And fluff this out. And that kind of completes our project. Because it already has a hanger on the back. You can see the original little ribbon on the back. And that's going to work fine for us. We didn't even have to create anything new for that. The next project is the Lucky Wreath. I have some, I think this is a 10 or 12 inch deco mesh. I'll have two different colors. We're going to need Mod Podge, some pipe cleaners, this wreath form from Dollar Tree. And you can see the information here and on the back. You need a shamrock form, whatever type you have. And then some coordinating paper for St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to cut my hanger off. This originally came from Target. I've had it for years and years and years. I bought three of them originally. I, I will link my St. Patrick's Day video from uh, last year so that you can watch that and see how I did another one of these, how I fixed it up. Trace it out on your paper on the back side, trim it out so that it fits pretty close. You don't have to have it exact. Then grab that Mod Podge and put that all over. I'm using the back because I don't want the little um, indentions from the front on there. I'm afraid I'll tear it when I try to smooth it out. So I'm just gonna use my back side. It's nice and smooth. Place it down and use my fingers to kind of smooth it out for first before I use my little squeegee. And this is a Mod Podge squeegee. And just push it out. I got the, the Mod Podge and the little squeegee from um, Plaid online. They have, they make these products and they are wonderful. I've gotten paints and all kinds of things from them. Take those pipe cleaners or chenille stems, however proper you want to say that, and then start putting these down on your wreath. I am going to go to the middle section of each of those little crossbars there and wrap that around. So there'll be six of those going around on those middle sections. And then we are going to add some to the outside. I guess we're gonna be making little poofs and we want them to be close together so they really fill out this wreath. I don't want any gaps where we can see the frame all the way through it. So there's our first row. Then let's go to the outside center and twist one in each section there. This is gonna hold everything in place nicely. So once it's complete, you are going to have 12 of these sections. This is gonna be our top and I'm gonna start it in the center. Take that first bundle of mesh and we're gonna squeeze it up in the end, kind of get your outsides flipped under because we want these to be bubbles. We don't want them flipped out. And then put about an inch of it down there, maybe a little more, and twist it tightly into place because we're gonna be pulling on this as we are putting it down on the reform. And I don't want anything to come out. So I've gotten kind of used to doing 10 inch poofs and that's what we're gonna do here because I know that you have seen me do this before and I know that you can do this. Bundle it up 
10 inches, go to the very next one, and that's on the outside. So you're going to wrap that outside one nice and tight. It really only takes a, you know, a couple of twists to lock it into place. You don't have to go nuts here, twisting all over the place. And then continue along, make another little loop. Going to see how we do it. You can use a ruler to measure, or if you have one of those, if you have a cutting mat with the lines on it, you can use your cutting mat. I'm so used to doing it with the ruler that I just always do it this way. But I know some people say that it's easier if you use the lines and measurements from a cutting mat. Or one of those sewing mats, I guess, that's a cutting mat. Once you get all the way back down with that original roll we started with, we're going to go over the spot where we first put it down and just go right on top of that and give it a few twists. Then grab your scissors. Don't cut it too close. I've got about two inches here. And then I'm gonna cut it. And then you can leave it right there. No problem, you're not gonna see it when you get it all fluffed out. And you can see these make bubbles. You gotta be sure when you're making your little bubbles that you keep those edges curled under so they make a nice poof. We're gonna take the next roll bunch it up. This is sort of, maybe it's chartreuse. It's a little bit duller than that though. Not quite as bright, but it's another shade of green, kind of a goldish green, I guess, that I want to add onto here. Now I'm using scraps. I got these rolls from the thrift store, so I have no idea how much is on the roll when I get started. I will tell you that the amount on this is not going to make it all the way around the reef, but you know how we do it on this channel. We're gonna make it work, right? We're gonna make it work, we're gonna make it our own, and I'm gonna show you what to do if you run out. This has happened to me before. It happened on a, I think it was a 4th of July wreath. Yes, I think it was. And we made it work. It turned out beautiful. So we're gonna continue with the same idea in mind that we can fix it. We can fix it. We're not going to get frustrated and stop. We're just going to change up our plan, right? If it's not working, change it up. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go around right on top of the exact same place. You're going to be outside, inside, outside, inside. Now, I didn't start this one on top of where the other one started and stopped because it was bulky enough. I just moved to a different section. You see how we ran out here? And there's about a quarter of the wreath that does not have that lighter green on it. What you see me doing is pulling the bubbles in and out. I've got uh, green to the inside, then the yellow to the inside, then the green, then the yellow, then the green, then the yellow, even though it's actually two shades of green. You get what I'm saying. I'm gonna pull those in and out, in and out, so that you can see that. Isn't that cute? So far, not bad. I know a lot of people don't like deco mesh. I don't blame you. It took me a while to get used to it. I still like to mix my media up when I do it though. I still like to put other fabrics and stuff in it. So for the stacks of this one, super, super, super easy. We're gonna make 24 12 inch green burlap strips and dovetail them. And we're going to make 12 of these gold pieces and dovetail those. Just make an X, put the gold in the middle, bunch it up in the center. And then you are just gonna go right down to any starting place you want on your wreath and we're going to go all the way around with each and every one of those sections and see no wire in that gold it's just um, but it will stand out it will do its own thing there and it, I think it looks good it doesn't make a very big impact until you get them all in there and then you can really see the difference because the colors are so similar here's our second little stack and it's the same thing. Some are going to be on the outside, some will be in the inside, but every single one of those little bunches where the bubbles are, in other words, every place you have pipe cleaners is going to get a bundle of ribbons. That's a lot of words to say a little thing, isn't it? Go through there and get your clippers and take off those green pipe cleaners because we don't need those anymore for this. And this is how it looks even without having, you know, anything else onto it. Nothing else added to it. This is how it looks. So here's that section that doesn't have the extra on it. We're gonna put the clover there. First, we've got to sand it down a little bit. 
if you've got a very nice pair of detail scissors, you can cut it off, surely if you'd like to do that. But I love to use this nail file. Uh, I just got it from Dollar Tree, not a big deal, they're cheap. And it's so easy to control. This is a diamond brand. You can just go through here and just sand off the edges all the way around till it is nice and smooth like this. You can paint your edges green if you want to, if you've got wood or something that you're using. Um, you could also use a shamrock, a little MDF sign if you wanted. We're gonna attach it with pipe cleaners and staples. So I've got it here and here. We're going to settle it down right over that section and it fits perfectly over where that gold is missing or I said gold, I didn't mean gold. That green, lighter color green is. So there's a, that gap and the clover fits right over the top of it. You're not even gonna notice it at the end of the video, except that I told you so. I'm sure you'll notice it then. But I don't think anybody else looking at your front door would say, hey, you missed a spot. And if they do, you tell them, go right on back where they came from, right? <laughs> okay, so now you can fluff your ribbons and fluff it out. We're gonna take that Lucky. Remember we took it off that pot in the beginning? We're gonna take that Lucky and put it on the shamrock. So I just have a little bit of school glue here. This has a kind of a finer tip. Recently found a bag of very fine tip glue uh, products at the thrift store and I was so excited. I, look, I don't know, glue, right? I get excited about glue, but I get excited about all craft stuff. I just do, there's so much joy for me in crafting so and especially when I can find something that's inexpensive then I'm really excited about that because I'm kind of a thrifty person I'm kind of a I guess you could say cheapskate <laughs> but I am so I like to save money any way that I can because the money I save goes back to my family right yep so I'm going to take a white pen you could use black you could use gold use what you have and I'm just gonna do dots and dashes all the way around the edge of the shamrock. And I'm gonna do the same thing around the lucky word there. I'm gonna go all the way around it, but you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm gonna show you just a little, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Y'all can add gold coins to this, anything you wanna add to your wreath if you really wanna give it a little extra something. You could use those shamrocks that we had that we pulled off the pot you can put those right back in there but i think they might get lost they're kind of small you can watch my videos on mondays and thursdays at five and it is free next project is the shamrock planter so i have got some seed pots you can certainly find your own at dollar tree antiquing wax and a brush, a little fake coin from Dollar Tree, those same flowers we used in the first project, some clovers from Dollar Tree, a little bit of this tubing, and some raffia or excelsior, whatever you have. So you see how these are wrinkled and these are nice and straight? See the difference? I figured out a way to make them straight Grab your your uh, little heating tool there, and, or hair dryer, whichever one. Concentrate on the fabric part, not the plastic part, for just a few minutes, and it almost irons it out. So I just lay it on my tabletop, and then put this over the top of it, and it will go completely straight. Now, one of them does fall off of the pick, but I just used a little hot glue to put it back on there. See, it fell off? No problem. I just used a little hot glue and put it right back on there. How about that for a hack? Isn't that nice? Now you can do that with yours. All right, so we're gonna use some foam. These are just some foam balls and I think they came from Dollar Tree. I put a scrap in the bottom and trimmed off a piece for the top. And we will start putting those beautiful glittery clovers in. Now I didn't notice a lot of fallout on these clovers. To be honest with you, I didn't. So, you know, I don't normally do glitter but I like the fact that this is, um, St. Patrick's Day and we want this to be festive and bright and pretty so I'm using the ones with the glitter but you can certainly use the plain ones. I got these last year but I'm sure you can find them this year. We're gonna make this like a mound with these clovers. 
So we're just going to go one in the top is going to be the tallest and you're going to go at a slant at an angle in with the next ones you do around the outside. And then you're going to fill in any little spots that you see could use a little something extra. Fill it in with those pieces of the other picks that we had. These beautiful little picks. And in nature, um, from my experience, we also have clover and you'll see all kinds of flowers growing in it. We have little white and yellow flowers and purple flowers in our yard already. Um, they grow in the grass, little wildflower looking things. I know y'all know what I'm talking about if you live in the South. And you're just gonna keep adding. You know what would be pretty it would be some faux jasmine. That would be very, very pretty in these projects. I did not have any, so I'm just gonna go with the white and yellow little daisies. Then I'm gonna take the greenery from those. I only had three little pieces of the greenery, the little yellow and green um, leaves, and I put those around the edge, just spaced them out in a triangle shape. And then I'm gonna take some of this moss, and you can find this at Dollar Tree, and stuff it up in there on the inside. Now, if you use a green styrofoam ball or green um, foam underneath, you don't even have to do this, but I think this gives it a really nice look. I wanna add this coin in there do you see how bright it is? I want to give it a little more of an aged look. And that's what we use antiquing wax for. So I'm just going to take it on the stencil brush and I'm just going to roughly put it on there. And I like to kind of build it up. So I don't want to go super dark at first. I don't want to dump it on there. Um, I'm just going to kind of offload it, tap it on, offload it until I get it in just the right coverage that I like. And you can see the difference. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. Now I'm gonna take some of this uh, raffia. I've got about six pieces of this. It's a little over a foot long. And I'm gonna put a piece of that tubing with it right on top. In the back, I'm gonna add some hot glue and put it right there because you know when you have something that's in the shape of this pot, things will slide down. But if you glue it in place on the back, you can actually get your knot tied in the front without it slipping all around and falling off when you're done with your project. So I'm just gonna make one simple tie. It's not even gonna be a knot, just wrapping it over and tucking. And then I'm gonna pull it, add some glue right underneath where I have knotted it so that it stays in place. And then right there, you see the glue on the bottom and top. Perfect, that's how we like it. Trim it down a little bit so it's not so long because this is just detail. I'm gonna use my little poppet foam blocks, cut one in half, and then straddle it right over that tie in the middle and stick it down on that project. I really like this. It's so simple, so simple and inexpensive to make, but how cute is that? And you could give it to a friend or a loved one. Cute, cute. Put it on your desk at work. Mm-hmm. Here are those projects. And I'm sorry my hands are shaky when I recorded this video. I do apologize for that. A little too much caffeine, I think. So here's the wreath, and you can see all the colors of green in there, but they're so close together that they just blend really nicely. I know y'all can do these projects. I believe in you, I really, really do. I have got so many people who have given me tips and you're teaching me things in the comment section, and it is much appreciated. I always, uh, appreciate somebody like telling me what type of flower it is when I ask questions you're answering my questions that helps me to learn and when the more I learn the more I can bring to you and help you guys out so I appreciate that and I thank you for that look at that pot of gold very abundant I hope that you have an abundant life and I hope you're having some joy in your day today thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon bye